And a reading from uh, Romans chapter 8. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I made the worst decision of my life on August 2nd, 1995. I was a couple weeks away from heading back for my sophomore year of college, and, and on this particular Wednesday, since I had the day off from work, I went with my younger brother, Ryan, to play tennis at Elm Creek Elementary School. Now, you may be thinking, oh, I didn't know Pastor Joel was a tennis player. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me be clear, I am not a tennis player. My brother and I simply went to play tennis. Big difference. So we biked to the tennis courts, and over the course of playing, each and every one of the balls we brought wound up flying over the fence of the enclosed court. As I said, I am not a tennis player. So, bereft of balls, Ryan and I had to go out and collect our errant spheroids. Ryan went one way, and, and I started going the other, but, but as I looked at how I'd have to travel, I would either have to go all the way over to the door and then back around outside to a place that was really just a couple feet from where I was standing. And that seemed like a long way to go. Or... I could climb the fence in front of me to get the balls. Now, my basic geometry skills kicked in. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. I wasn't about to question the wisdom of my math teachers, so I chose option two, and I climbed the fence. That was not the worst decision of my life. Now, this was a, a chain-link fence, about 10 to 12 feet tall, and, and I was able to make it to the top rather easily. But when I got to the top of the fence, I realized that I, I couldn't quite turn my body around to, to swing my leg over and, and climb back down the other side without feeling like I was going to fall off. So I faced a decision. I had two choices. Climb back down and walk all the way around, or I could jump. That is, admit defeat or keep going. I jumped. That was the worst decision of my life. Now, I recall being self-controlled and aware, judging the velocity of my descent and engaging how and where I would land. My brother Ryan claims that I flailed my arms around and screamed in what he considered one of the funniest things he'd seen in his 14 years of life up to that point. His version is probably closer to the truth. I landed and then crumpled to the ground as pain shot through my left leg. My left foot had taken the full force of the fall, and in that split second when I hit the ground, I dislocated all the bones in my foot and tore all of the ligaments. So, did this happen for a reason? Well, sure. I, the reason it happened is that I, I made a dumb decision, and the physics of a young adult body crashing a, onto the ball of its foot at that speed meant that something had to give, and what gave were the ligaments and metatarsals in my foot. But I don't really think that's what today's holy question is, is getting at. I think we usually ask, does everything happen for a reason? Because, because we want to know what, what God has to do with things. So, did God cause me to jump off that fence? 
I don't think so. Was this, was this event scripted as part of God's plan for my life? Again, I, I don't think so. That would be a pretty mean-spirited plan. So in terms of, of, of who God is and, and what God does, did this happen for a reason? Well, I don't think so, at, at least not in the ways we usually ask this holy question. Now, this is where we have to consider the nature of, of, of who God is and how God relates to us. Because it would actually be much easier if we could confidently say that, that yes, everything happens for a reason, and yes, everything is a part of God's plan, and yes, God is in control, and somehow that makes everything okay. But would things really be better if we could say that everything happens for a reason? That the senseless and painful and violent and awful things that happen are, are somehow part of some divine plan? Now, one of our members, Danielle Vinup, she wrote and recorded a, a song a few years ago, which is a remarkable response to this question. So, Danny, I'm going to invite you to come on up, and Brian Schrader, you're, you're going to help her out, and, and I think it's, it's good for us to hear how one of our own wrestled with this question, does everything happen for a reason? And then, uh, Danny, you're willing to share your response, too. So, um, before you uh, went through the, the songwriting, I'll have you come on out here. Before you went through the, uh, the songwriting process, how would you have answered that question, does everything happen for a reason? I would have said yes. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, so just kind of, and, and where did that come from? I think it was, I guess, an easy answer, and it was what I heard around me, and it, it made sense at the time. Sure. Yeah. So then what happened in the, the songwriting process for you that, that transformed your views, that, that changed your answer? Um, at the time, as um, I was kind of started to wrestle with that question, a lot of things were happening around me and my family and friends. There were a lot of cancer diagnoses. A friend lost um, a child. Um, Hurricane Katrina hit. And so it, that question started to kind of uh, rumble around in my brain that it didn't make sense so much anymore. It didn't jive with the God that I knew. Mm -hmm. Like, um, uh, these bad things are happening to good people, and, sure. and why would God let all those things happen? It didn't seem like there was a good reason for that. And, and so what ended up happening as I wrote this song and all these things were ha uh, going on is, um, why would God let that happen? And, and my answer that I came up with was that he, he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But they, that he put, you know, in our hearts... Um, all, all this love that we can help each other when things happen, when sure. bad things happen. Yeah, yeah, sure. And what's the what's the song called? The song is "Can't Pin It on God." All right. And will you share with us? I will. Excellent. Thanks. My God does not keep score. My God does not love me more. So if I'm rich or if I'm poor. does not pick and choose my god does not change the news so if it's fatal or benign you can't pin it on god well it's kind of like a prison when you're locked inside your prayers always looking for a reason for every little thing i say it's better
Danny, thanks for your, for your direct and your thoughtful uh, response to this important question. So, for instance, me jumping off that fence, well, I can't pin it on God. But here's what we can pin on God, and this is really important. As we heard from Paul in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. And since God is neither an indifferent, distant observer, and God is also not a a puppeteer who is controlling everything, what this means is that, that God uses what's available. No, not everything happens for a reason, but but God is always at work to bring goodness through whatever God has available to use. Our prayers, our willingness to listen to God, our hopes and dreams and ideas that we turn over to God, God can and will use them all. It's that, that line in Danny's song, but when we pray for the strength that turns to action in the world, we can do the heavy lifting with our own two hands and feet. You see, God uses what's available. And sometimes what's available isn't what God hopes for or desires, but God works with what God has. And so when what God had to work with was the ill-considered decision of a 19-year-old to hurl himself off a fence, well, God worked with it. And so, no, God did not actually want me to jump. But through that experience, I learned a lot about patience in the weeks after my surgery during a long, arduous recovery. I had to learn how to ask for help and and rely on others to do things like carry my tray in the college cafeteria. I had to go slowly around campus, I had to find accessible ways in and around buildings. I I learned some empathy through this. And, And no, this is not how God wanted me to learn. But God worked for good through it all. So our lives are always under God's care. But God does not coerce us or force us to do anything. God encourages and and influences, always trying to to lead us to do what is good in God's eyes. And God knows our tendencies, but God doesn't control our decisions. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't. But God keeps working for good by using what's available every time. And so when we keep wondering about why things happen the way they do and and why there's evil in the world and why bad things happen, we can always count on this. We can always pin this on God too. This is a few verses later in Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We can pin this on God. So we may not know the reasons why some things happen or even if there's a reason at all, but we can trust that God is with it through it all and God will always be working for good and God will never, ever let anything separate you from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, 
our Lord. Amen.